Welcome back to Super Tuesday Recap. It is Chris and D Palm here, and we are here uh, to review uh, the Flash. That's the only episode we're doing on Tuesday this week. Uh, we have the Flash, the Wrath of Savitar, season three, episode fifteen. While Barry, while training with Barry, Wally starts to have visions of Savitar, which he hides from the team. A dangerous secret threatens Barry and Al- Iris's happiness. Um, yeah. So, uh, what do you think of this episode, man? I like that our main plot got to move forward. I don't like that it was an hour of like, haven't we all made these mistakes before? All right. You know what? I, I feel better now. Cause, uh, okay, again, no, I'm serious. I, I hope that wasn't alone because it just feels like for a show that features a speedster, they seem to run in place a lot. Like, I, I'm watching this episode... I, you know, I, I, I watched it. I, I didn't watch it live with everybody else. I came back home, watched it. I saw everybody was hype about it and really excited about it. I watched it and like, again, there's, and this is going to sound really bad because it's going to sound like we hate, we don't like this show. And I, and I hate feeling like this. I hate feeling like that guy who continually nags on a show, but then swears he likes it. I do like this show, but I feel like they've been making, and, and this is a problem that we've been, we've been pointing out with them. They've been making some really silly mistakes the last, and it's not even silly mistakes. They've been making some really poor choices when it comes to certain things on the show. And this episode just continues that. Um, There are a lot of things that just felt lazy. And again, if I didn't have such a high bar for the show, Maybe it wouldn't matter. Like I said, it's nothing here that makes me hate the show or maybe go, oh, I'm never going to watch it again. Or, you know, like everybody knows how what happened with me with Gotham, uh, the way I felt with um, oh, shit. Uh, that last season of The Strain. Oh, my God. Like whew, the last the season, I think it was season two that I watched. Oh, my God. You guys know how I felt about that. I, I got I was angry all the time I did those reviews. It's nothing like that. No. It's just with this show, though, it's just. I expect better and more. You know what it is? And um, it's, the writing can get lazy sometimes, and it just and it's blaring when it does. Yeah, and 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 and, and, and it's really lazy. And it, like, I'm gonna be honest here, man. And this is why I say that to me, Arrow has been the best CW show so far this season. Think about what they did last. Cause I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bring up that other show that's on break right now. Okay, that is completely unfair. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's different. They're playing different sports. Yeah, it's it's just it's it's not fair. It's it's just it, it's not fair to this show. It's not fair to anybody else. So I'm not going to bring up the other show. I'm going to compare it to Arrow. Think about what they did last week with Arrow with the reveal of Prometheus. It's really well done. It was earned, and it made sense. What they did this week with Caitlin keeping a piece of the Philosopher's Stone. What the fuck. Like, it's like they were like, we need a way for Savitar to come back. Oh, let's throw something out there that we we didn't earn. Right. And it's, Caitlin kept a piece of Philosopher's Stone because she wanted to use it to get rid of her powers. Which is, again, that would have worked for me. Is If she'd have pocketed at the time. If she had pocketed at the time. Or, if we had seen the last few episodes... Her working to try to get rid of her powers. We have not Something seen any, right. We have not seen any movement on that since. So you do not get to have a very like this is a huge plot point in this episode. And again, there are things I like in this episode, but it's hard for me to get past that when it's not earned. Like all of a sudden she kept a piece of Philosopher's Stone. That we never saw break off, which doesn't make any yep. sense. I mean, we never saw a break off. We never saw her pocketed. We never saw her working on it. We never saw her actually trying to get rid of her powers. But she pocketed it. I'm also not liking the fact that it felt like they threw it in there because the reaction of the team to what Caitlyn did, the only person that had a legit reaction was Julian. Yeah, that's the only reaction I bought. Yeah. He had a legit, no, you lied. Like, you betrayed my trust. You did all this stuff. That doesn't make, basically, fuck you. I can't trust you anymore. 
Barry got, Barry was more forgiving of Caitlyn than he was of Wally. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can't. I'm, that's bullshit. I, I, that's, buy, well, I, I, think, I would I buy. Think, honestly, because Wally's felt like, first of all, Barry, I thought Barry was already mad at Wally. Um, but second of all, it felt like the Wally thing was kind of a lot of things, particularly like a lot of the character traits that we'd noticed in Wally coming to a head. Mm-hmm. So it felt almost more earned. It honestly, because of the way it came out of nowhere, the way it was not set up at all, and the way that it was so easily brushed off by literally everyone, it felt like the the Caitlin thing was like, oh shit, we got to get them the rocket here somehow. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it, yeah, write two lines here, and then have Barry look, Barry, Barry shake his head sadly, and that'll be it. Like it, it, it felt like a, a late pet. And I'm sorry, that's this show is better than that. You know, mm-hmm. like I, this show is better than that. It, it it has been, and that was just that was too lazy. Like there are so many other things they could have done here. You know, it it didn't make sense. Like for a minute there, I thought they were gonna try to. You, you know what it was? I thought they were gonna do when she pulled it out. I was like, oh, is that is that the thing that Cisco and 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 um and and Julian presented her to keep her powers in check? The necklace. That would have made sense. Yeah. Because Julian helped her make the necklace. If it comes out that Julian didn't know that that was a piece of what it was, and somehow that would have made sense. I would have bought that. I would have bought that. But no, she had it locked away. And then what made it even worse is when Barry, when (laughs) Barry asked her, well, did it work? Well, no, I didn't really get to use it. Oh my, that's when I lost it. When she admits that she didn't even get a chance to really work on, I'm like, yeah, no, because they didn't show us any of that in the previous episodes. Right, because it makes no sense at all. And um, I'll go back to the the Wally thing. I, I, I think overall you're right. It is Phil Earn because of, and and it goes back to what Savitar said that Wally. We'll get to that later about you know basically playing on Wally's um, ego and his inexperience stuff like that. Definitely. The problem I have is that Wally's explanation to to Barry actually made sense. He's like, "Look, I it thought it, I, no, sense no, no, no. I, I thought it was all in my head." He said that he hadn't physically dealt with Wolf. There was no physical contact with Savitar, and the fact that he's been pushing himself so hard. Hey, he thought it was all in my head. You didn't see it. We we, we know speech or see see. See, Savitar, nobody else sees it. It's all in my head. i never been physically attacked by it. I literally thought that I'm just, you know, it, it. I didn't know what it was. I thought I was going fucking crazy. I would, I buy that more. And that makes more sense to me than, any, than anything that happened with Caitlyn. See, I'd buy that too, except for the fact that literally since he showed up, Wally's big thing has been, why are you keeping secrets to everyone? But then he's keeping secrets himself. Exactly. He's made the he has been the guy who's been the voice of truth the entire show. Well, I don't think he's but I don't see here's the thing. I don't think what Wally what Wally did was lying or even lying by omission. It's one of those I'm not trying to be crazy. If it if it becomes a thing, I'll say something, but maybe I'm just Chris, you know you know you know, you know what it, you know, you know what it is? God. Well, here's the thing. He got out to kill but are we sure? What do you mean? I mean, he he doesn't know. Like, I think the other problem is too, and it goes back to what we were saying with Caitlyn. The first time we've seen Wally have any dealings with Savitar was in the last episode. Then you have it at the beginning of this episode, he sees him again. From Wally goes, it's been a week. I'm like, for me, it's been Barely twice. For the viewer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so it's like, it goes back to it being lazy. Like, you haven't, if you want me to have these emotional connections here, then you have to build them up. Like, think about it this way. Uh, and I hate to do this. I'm going to bring up this show. But when Ada finally turns on Radcliffe, it's earned and not out of nowhere because from the, the minute Ada looked at the dark hold, we've all been noticing small little instances of Ada 
her her facial expressions, the way her reaction is to certain things that Radcliffe says. We've been waiting on that moment because there's been small little things like that. For both of the stuff with Caitlyn and with Wally, none of that exists. And it literally goes from this one thing happening. It's worse with Caitlyn because it, it, there's literally no basis for it whatsoever. And then with Wally, it's literally, hey, we saw Wally at the end of the episode have see Savitar. Savitar went, run towards him. We don't know what happened after that. And then we see him at see Savitar off in the distance. That's it. Like I'm, I don't, I can't buy the, I can't buy Barry's reaction because I'm like, well, shit. If if I just saw, maybe I'm seeing things. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm stressed out. Like I buy Wally's explanation that, hey, listen, he's Barry's put all this weight on Wally's shoulder to save his sister. It makes sense that he might be under a little stress. And 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 seeing things. Yeah, but none of that's happening in a vacuum. Barry Wally's wanted that way. He's been begging for that way. Yeah, Barry didn't no, just I get voice you. it upon him. No, I get you. Because he, 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 like, he was entirely getting backseated. And then again, like, I just, for for this show and for what they've gone through the last two years about being betrayed from within, Barry's reaction for me makes perfect sense. It's like, look, I can't risk you being around. No, no, I, I get that. I think my, I, I get his, his reaction of, you can't be here, uh, Savage so might be looking. The way I, he did it was dickish. Yeah, I agree with that. 100%. Yeah, yeah. No, I get. I get when he said he can't be. Well, he can't be around because Savage might be looking. Like that was smart. I get that. But it's his. It's his original reaction, which is like, Barry, are you fucking serious right now? Like you can't be fucking serious. You do this shit all the time. You do. You literally do this shit all the time. You know. I mean, hell, we get to that later on with with what he did with uh, with Iris. It's like, Barry, this is literally your thing. So I don't know, man. It's it's just those are two big pieces in this episode that I mean overall huh they were misses they weren't hits they were just and when your two big parts miss it's hard for me to get sucked in the episode and I and and again that's it feels like that's three episodes in a row where outside of those 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 things those things have been those small I say they're small things I think that some small things could have fixed them but they make bigger issues, and then when I watch the episode, it takes me out. I watched the episode again. I watched the episode twice. Um, like I said, I normally do. I watched the first episode by myself. Again, it was late at night. I was like, you know what? Let me watch it again tonight before I do the re- review. Maybe it was just the way I was feeling. Maybe it was late. I watched it again, and I I literally have in my notes as I'm uh, I'm I'm watching this. Uh, what the fuck, Caitlin? <laughs> Because like, it, it's just, it's so unearned out of it there. It makes no sense within the story. No, it, it just, you know, and, and there are small things they do in the episode. And, and what bothers me is there are small things they do in the episode that lets you know that Caitlyn is Caitlyn. Like, every time they're talking about the Philosopher's Stone, Caitlyn, they, they kind of, you if you watch the episode again, you'll see the camera. It'll either um, focus on Caitlyn in the background or you'll see Caitlyn's uh, uh, facial expressions. So it's like you'll see it there, and you're like, "Oh wow," but it just it it just does not like her rate. Her reason makes no sense. How did the piece break off? Why did she keep it? Um, and and I, I don't know. And just the fact that everybody else let it kind of let it go, other than Julian. Just right. it. And what what does to me it under it undercuts her character, which I think they have been making doing a really good job this season, and it become and way more interesting. Caitlin so well, right? And it just th- makes it feels like they just gave up or not gave up. And I hate saying that because I know they're working hard, and I know it's probably hard, it's got to be hard to say we've got a great story, great go fill twenty two hours with it. Well, shit. Um, yeah. All right. Like it's a tough ask. I get it. But I, but they I mean, missed. I mean, that's all I can say. They missed. Yeah, and and like. Um, honestly, and I and I get that n- making it Caitlyn and not Killer Frost that did this is supposed to be a. And I think they even mentioned in there when when HR is trying to say, well, it's, it was a Killer Frost persona, and that's when she was like, no, it was me. That's supposed to hit bigger for you because you're like, oh wow, it wasn't something forced out of her. It was actually Caitlyn. That should matter, right? But it actually matters less now, like. Uh, to me, it would have made more sense if it was the Killer Frost persona, 
Because then I would have been like, oh, well, that makes sense why we didn't see it, why nobody knew, and why none of this happened. It would have made sense if somehow the Killer Frost persona had grabbed it and then Caitlyn found out later on and she's been trying to hide it. Like, that would have made more sense to me than Caitlyn all of a sudden knowing how much the entire team is working to save Iris. Knowing that, going... I'm going to keep a piece of stone anyway. I didn't think of it. Like, you know what it is? It reminds me of the last season what happened with Caitlyn when she would say something really stupid and you're like, but she's supposed to be, she's just as smart as everybody else in the lab. No, I just think about the season one finale when someone has to explain to her what a black, what an event horizon is. Yeah, like, wait I'm a minute. Like, no, so, she's smart. So you're telling me that the smart woman in the room is too stupid to realize that keeping the piece of the philosopher's stone is stupid? And then they try to clean it up by going, well... Savitar's trapped in the speed force, so really he needed the stone anyway, and that's what he... I was like, it... And, and so it tries to lessen the blow, but it just... The damage is done by that point, and, um... Yeah, I, I just... It, 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 I'm not gonna lie, it, 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 it hurt it hurt the episode for me. It really took me out. Those two moments really took me out. Um, because, like you said, it feels like we're running in place. <laughs> and, um... I don't know. I feel like all the CW shows have that problem in their third seasons. Because even Arrow had yeah, a problem feels, in third season. It, it feels like they, they kind of they, they got the two strong early ones and then it's like, okay, we got to kind of redefine ourselves as opposed to going back to the well. I think it's like Arrow, what, to season five to figure out that, wait, doing what we do best is what's best. Right. And I'm really hoping for a rogue season next season. Yeah, we need that. We need that um, because that, that that you need something you need something different but also familiar, and um, we'll get into this later with, 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 with who Savitar is. But I'm starting to get that stinking feeling that the reveal of who Savitar is won't hit me like the reveal of Prometheus did. Yeah, um, which is going to be a problem. Well, hold on. Okay, so hold on. Say that again. You don't think it's going to hit? I, I don't think it is. What do you think it is? Um, The only thing that could possibly make sense to me, there's two choices. Um, It's either future Barry okay. or another another version of Barry or it's Wally, a future Wally. That, either way, I'm good with those. I think those are good options. I think they're good options. Part of me feels like if the problem I have is if it's neither one of those, Oh, if it's either one of those, we're 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 in, we're in deep water, guys. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's my problem. Like, if it's neither one of them, then because the entire episode I'm watching this and I'm going and it, so so we're out with the negative, right? Um, I I do like the fact of how they played the Savitar Wally thing. You know, when you take out the the negatives, I, I like that because again, you're playing off of of a, what who Wally is. His ego, his desire to save his sister, his desire to do it all himself and to prove himself. Like, Savitar is using that against against Wally to free himself. Makes sense. Loved it. And it also kind of made me go, just hearing Savitar speak about certain things, it was like, oh, it could be future Wally because, you know, you have Barry has always had this, like, Barry will go, oh, yeah, hey, Wally, yeah, we're going to do it. But there's always been that tension between Barry and Wally. And the way Savitar speaks, I'm like, that would make sense if it was a Barry, if it was Wally. I could see that. Um, It'd be kind of elegant if he tricks Wally into taking his place because he knows because he did it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? A really nicely done, elegant time travel story that's tragic all the same. Yeah. So... I, and again, I, I immediately was thinking to myself, oh man, that's Wally. That would that would be a big thing. I think if it's Wally, then it will hit. Could also be um I wanna say Barry, but I don't know if that that I don't I don't think that I, that works as well. Um I think it can because you have to drop from Savitar this week saying you're the villain, you're the big bad here, Barry. Yeah, and that's that's something something I had in my note too, just overall, that to me the season three bad guy is Barry Allen. You know? Um, And I don't mean that like, oh, he's going to take the mask off of Savitar and it'll be him. I just mean that like, he's the cause of all this. Because even Savitar says, hey, you're the one that gave me the idea to use Wally. Which is why I think the season ends with him dying. Redefine the show. 
Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I, I felt like, um, yeah, so, um, I really think that to me, Savitar has to be Wally. The Wally that, again, it goes back to the whole thing. Trapped in there, uh, Wally's whole life. mine several times. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, it would make sense if it is a, a, a future version of Wally who got trapped in there, and that all makes sense to me. Um, uh, even down to him uh, killing his sister, it was either you or me. Like, I could see that happening. Losing your mind in there and, and going going to that, that, that place. You know, explain why Wally isn't there to save save uh save Iris. Um yeah, it all it all makes sense to me. You know? Um and, and just the fact of how in a way selfish Barry has been with Wally in so many cases. So many so many cases. Even here, even even him training Wally to this point has been about Barry trying to save Iris, not really training Wally and being a mentor to, to Wally. He's, but that's why Wally was training too. Like that's let, let, let's let's not. I mean. Oh no 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 I, no! I, I get you on that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but Barry's also been a dick about it. Okay, all right. I'm gonna take on this narrative of Barry being a dick because Barry, yeah, is is he doing it probably in the least effective way? Yeah, but I can't really see since he started sharing things, Barry being wrong. Did Barry propose from the wrongest, maybe not the best reasons? Yeah, but at the same time, like. He's not doing it out from a place of just like he's doing it a place of trying to protect everyone he loves. No, absolutely. Um, and I yeah. think that it's easy for us from the removed to, to to say, "Oh, look at how dumb this character is being." First of all, that's a, you have to write your lead characters dumb, otherwise, a man who lives at life speed should never have a villain <laughs> ever. Right, right. It just you shouldn't. But secondly, it it I think that. Everything that's happening with Barry is consistent, particularly if you think about the last few seasons, which have culminated with him watching his mother and then his father die. No, absolutely. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm almost surprised they haven't had a scene of Barry throwing away that sweater she's wearing when she gets killed. <laughs> right. Hey, look, like, look, better look, safe than fucking sorry. For, I don't know. I'm trying anything. He's That's the thing that I think that Gustin has done in his performance that they haven't put on the paper yet, mm -hmm. is that he's, this is the desperate flash. Hey, for the record, I I totally like when I found when I when I realized that the ring wasn't on her finger. Look, I don't count that as as Dick Barry. I count that as no. smart. That that's that's hey smart move, Barry. No. I, I, look, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm looking at I'm looking at Iris like mm, you took the ring off. What the fuck's wrong with you? I'm like hey, Iris, let me tighten up. There's a plan here. Yeah, look, look. Maybe I, it doesn't work, Iris. But wouldn't you rather have a shot? Right. Um. It, 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 and again, this goes back to so so when it comes to Iris in the ring and Barry in the ring and stuff like that, I'm Team Barry on this one, and I go back to the writers of, hmm, uh, I need you guys or be a little more consistent with with Iris. This is the same Iris that w went up to that um to that one the the the, the arms dealer saying she couldn't no. die. Reckless ass Iris. Reckless ass Iris. All right, saying she couldn't die. Now all of a sudden she's mad because the man she loves and the man who loves her more than anything in the world basically proposed to her uh in a, in a in a bid to hopefully save her life. I've heard proposals for worse reasons. I have a friend who legitimately got proposed. I asked, "Why did you propose?" He shrugged and said, "We've been together for a while." I was like, "Really?" <laughs> yeah. They're divorced now and an addendum to that story. But, but I, I'm 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 fully expecting us to get get angry emails from our female listeners uh, about this. Yeah, you mad but, at me? Go listen to the "Let's Get Married" by Jagged Edge. That's yeah. a terrible reason to get married. <laughs> Look, um, I'm Speech just saying. God might kill you is a pretty good reason. I'm just saying. I want you to look at. Uh, I want you to think of all the reasons your significant other, your wife, your your husband, asked you to marry you. Your your what, the reason why your boyfriend might. Ask, in order to save your life is probably not one of those reasons. And I'm telling you right now, it doesn't get better than that. I, 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 I'm, look, I'm going to be that. I'm going to be that guy. Send the hate mail in blame Chris on this one. I'll take the heat, right, but one, I will ride with you. Blame people on too. Cause I'm sorry, dog. Like this is the hill you decide to die on out of everything Barry has done. 
this is the one thing we're going to have a have a little heart. Are you fucking serious right now? You fucking serious? You went to an arms dealer and told them that you're not going to die because of you were reckless. But Barry decides to say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to lock it down and put a ring on it because you know what? In the future, she didn't have a ring on. I love this woman. Love her more than anything else. I'm trying to change the... He's trying to change the future for you. time for you. <laughs> he tried to change time for you. All right? And, and, and you're mad because he's not... <laughs> Are you fucking serious right now? I, I'm, I'm sorry, but... I've seen dudes who wouldn't change a tire for them. <laughs> this nigga's trying to change time, Chris. There are dudes. He's trying to alter eventualities. <laughs> uh, of all the people whose motivations I didn't get in this episode, it's Iris. The people whose motivations I did get was Joe. Mm -hmm. Look, it's very sweet that Barry proposed. It's very sweet that he was able to do it in front of all their friends. One, call me old fashioned, you ask the father. <laughs> you just do. I got a funny story about asking uh, the fiance's father. I'll tell it sometime on the Sandy Check or a Hello Cupid. It's hilarious, objectively. <laughs> it happened to me, so at the time, not that funny. <laughs> but it's objectively a funny story. Two, you know what? Because we've all seen the, the, the sitcom trope, can I call you dad? Mm -hmm. Is Joe's response, of course you can call me Dad Barry. I've raised since she was eight. You actually raised the same house as her. That's basically your sister. This is all fucking weird. Yes, it's, uh, yes. It is. I, I was hoping you would say this because we have to remind <laughs> Like, no one's going to say that? Like, I was like, when people were like, when they had the shot look on their faces before, like, everyone got happy, I was like, oh, good. Someone's going to bring up the inherent weirdness of this whole thing. Thank God. I was, I was looking at but HR. No. I, was, I was looking at HR. I was, I was waiting on HR to do it. Yeah, I was like, step up, HR, just step up. This, this is this is your moment, sir. This is your this moment. This is your spot, bro. That's like kicking it to Ray Allen for a corner three. You got to shoot. I'm gonna need you to shoot. Yeah, no, no, no. Like it. Well, it, again, it goes to another little thing that um was felt like another little pothole. Cause last week they made it seem like Barry did go to go Joe because he went to get the fucking ring. Right. He asked Joe to hold on to the ring. Now, okay, huh? Yeah, no, you. <laughs> I love how you can hear yourself trying to reconcile. I was like, nope. Yeah, I, I'm. I was like, yo, wait, you, 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 you mentioned that he went to, you went to go, you, Joe held on to the ring for you. So when he just gave you the ring, hey, yeah, hey, uh, Barry, by the way, I have your, still have your mom's ring. Here, oh, you, oh, you want it now? Oh, I wonder what for. Okay, cool. No, I'm just gonna go get polished, Joe. You know? Yeah, he's been sitting up there dusty. Uh huh. Sure, sure. But no, no, I totally got Joe's um, Joe's reaction is like, no, no, you got. It. But again, it goes to another one of the things. Uh, didn't really, didn't really go back to it. Cause that, that's the other thing too that that kind of got me this episode, pacing wise. They would have serious moments like that, and they would cut to something dealing with the plot. So in that moment, when Joe kind of pulls Barry aside, going, "What the fuck, dude? You didn't ask my permission." All of a sudden, there's a fire. Conveniently time fire. And he has to go in with Wally. Because 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 the other speedster is too busy looking at the fucking ring. Yeah. The girl's been... Bl she's caught up in... The like, hey, man. First of all, don't be that sexist, assholes. Second of all, you're right. And it's something... <laughs> and I hate doing this, but I do it sometimes. Everything in the world is pro wrestling. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was listening to the show where they talk, Shawn Michaels was talking about what the new guys don't do well. He says they don't wait for a moment. He says, what do you mean? He says, when you take a big bump, if you just lay there for an extra five, ten seconds, it really gives the crowd a chance to react. Give me a chance to react to these emotional beats. Give it space for that emotion to breathe so that I can have a, a reaction to it. And then just like the characters are supposed to be, jar me out of it with the with the uh, the alarm, the fire. Right. Don't if if it never if it never gets a chance to affect me as the audience. The fire is not going to matter. By the way, they did the same and thing. And then there were other sections of the episode that felt like they dragged. And I'm like, wait a second. Why wouldn't you add these seconds earlier? I don't know, man. It just, you're right. Pacing fell off this episode. They haven't really been not hitting their stride the last three weeks. I'm not going to yeah, lie. Yeah. No, uh, they, did the same, they did the same thing with um the Irish and, 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 um, and Barry conversation. Because he gives this big spiel about 
well, Barry, you know, I don't want, you know, I don't want you, uh, being always worrying, always doing this stuff to, to, to worry about saving me. I can't remember exactly how she put it, which in the back of my mind, I'm going, says, don't do this because you're scared. Right. Which, which I, I'm like, okay, this makes sense. I like the way the conversation going. This is something about it for, oh, I don't want you doing it for eternity. And that's when he, he realized that it's probably the speed force and they cut back to like, they cut away from that. I'm like, what? No, this is an emotional yeah. moment here. It's a, it's an important moment here. And the transition is horrible. <laughs> like, it, it's just, like, that's so you horrible. Know what, you know what's occurred to me? How many engagements have happened because of fear? I don't do this, she going to leave me. Come on, every, every that's, that's every. <laughs> not everyone. Not, <laughs> not, well, not, okay, you're not everyone, not everyone. But I mean, like, come on, y'all. Let's, this is not, it's not the, it's not the first. <sighs> Whatever. Um. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I I'm sorry. I, I just felt like. I, I just felt like that was handled really poorly. Like that was a agree, that was a that was a that was a really bad. Oh well, Barry's not doing it for. Oh no, I know you really love me. Okay, then what the fuck's the problem? Then full stop. Right, Chris. We live in a planet that has the Bachelor. Come on, man. She mad? You trying to save her life? Come Tighten up, Iris. Come on, man. Like she had to move. Well, you know, after Christmas, you asked me to move in with you, and that was really really fast. I'm like, really? Now. Now all of a sudden, that was, at no point since then have we've gotten any feeling that you thought you were moving too fast. And the other thing I, I hate about it is when 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 Barry asked last week for Iris to marry him, it didn't feel like it was because of well she didn't have the ring on. Like at no point did they even say suggest that he, he didn't he knew that. It, it felt like on some well you need to take time to live in the present. Which is kind of where the whole, hey, I bought us a place. I want you to move in with me thing happened after. I think Jay told him that last, that that episode. You need to live in the present. Now you're kind of going back and you're kind of almost retconning that stuff going, oh, well, no, he's doing it all because he's afraid and he's just moving. And I'm like, but that, that, that's, that doesn't make any sense either. It's just, I don't know. I, I feel like the, the writing on that stuff has just been... It's 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 felt it's felt forced, and all right, I'll, I'll get into more things I like about it. But I'm, I'm gonna go into this now because I know I'm gonna keep going with my people. Going to think I'm salty and I'm just a, I I have no joy. I'm gonna be honest, man. I'm I'm less than I already wasn't looking forward to that musical crossover episode. I'm really not now because to me, what can the episode do? Like at this point, it's too late in the season. You're going to do an episode that feels like it's not going to move the plot forward at all. Hey, man, what's it like to be this dedicated to being wrong as hell? All right, man. I'm just saying. Like, I'm a Falcons fan, so I got, I've got an idea. Just saying, man. I mean, I'm not saying, hey, look, I'm not saying that on its own, it won't be a fun episode. You guys will enjoy it. But at this point, this is episode 15. That'll be what, episode 17? Yep. You'll have five more episodes left in the season. Do you really want to take a, take a musical detour with Supergirl? Well, first we don't know what the detour cause. It could very well be tied to this. Okay, all. all right, maybe, hey, maybe it is. They got, they, it's got to be. Of all, we're dealing with some pretty heavy stakes here since right before Christmas, mm -hmm. and I think a little levity of the episodes that I'm excited for, that the rest of America with um, hope and joy and love in their hearts is also excited for, is going to be much needed. It's particularly headed down to what I think to be a very brutal five episode stretch. I mean, I hope you're right, man. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I, I just, I, I'm, I feel like I'm in a slump right now with this show. Yeah, and, I, and you know what? I, I, I agree 100. percent I think next episode's getting all trying to get Wally back, and then episode 17 is going to be that palate cleanser. That here we go. Let's get ready for the sprint of the last five, oh. where I think they're going to kill more people than I think we're ready for. And I'm looking forward to that. Oh, by the me way, too. when I got to throw something else in there too, um, again, there's just so many things that stood out to me when I watched it the second time. All right, Deepa, I'm gonna ask you. You have you have, you have super speed, right? All right, all right let's, let's, let's say you have super speed. Let's say your fiance has super speed too. All right. Let's say she has okay, super speed. We'll all right, all right. Let's say you were getting sucked into the speed force. And your fiance was watching it. 
would she just stay there or would she run out to try to save you too? I, I, you know, she's a ride or die. I think she would, I, uh, she would run out to save me. Final answer. Oh, okay. Cause, um, Jesse just fucking stood there. Yeah, Jesse chill, dude. I was like, is she not having a suit? What's the problem here? Barry went, got know. a suit and ran. Jesse stayed there like she didn't have fucking superpowers. Yo, and Barry, um, that picosecond you lost on getting the suit on, just run. It's an abandoned warehouse. You got eyes on it. Just go. No one's going to see you. It's at night. Just go. Yeah. I, I'm like until the until the suit gets in the ring, just go. I, I'm yeah, yeah. Mm, mm, just not mm. Cisco. Mm. Cisco. Oh, God, just I don't know what you're working on, dude. For for last week we found out you only have one pair of vibe gear and now you you still don't have a Yo, fucking suit in the ring. What the why, fuck? Haven't, why don't you have a backup, Cisco? Have you seen what the shit you put yourself through? What's going on here? And I, and I love I love how they kind of played on that this week with HR banging it to see if it worked. <laughs> He's like, would you stop? Right. It's all big, totally shit. But no, like, Jesse stood there. She fucking stood there. Like. Frozen. What are you, what are you, what are we doing here? What are you? I'm, I'm sorry. I just, it's moments like that where I'm just like, I want to go into that writing room and be like, tighten the fuck up. Tighten the fuck <laughs> up. Because that's, that, that is not, you, tighten the fuck up, man. And I, here's the thing. I felt like the episode started strong because it finally got us, it got us Jesse, Wally, and, and, and Barry running together. Oh, I, I put that, I loved it. I love that scene. I love that moment. And it didn't, even, it didn't even feel bad when I'm like, oh, I got that moment. I was like, yo, we might lose Wally this episode. I thought that when I saw that scene. I was like, yeah, we're going to get it right now. We're going to lose Wally this episode. I'm, I'm, I'm prepared for it. But it's these little little speed bumps, no pun intended, throughout this episode with things like that. It's like, come on. Jesse definitely runs out there too. She has speed. Why wouldn't she do? She apparently loves this man so much already that she's clearly emotionally affected by it. I love the moment with her and, and HR at the end when HR comes. Like, I felt, again, it's things like that. I'm like, okay, you set that up already. That way. Yeah, that yeah. landed because you they set that up Um, the episode of, um the last episode when 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 she said to them about how uh he was different, he was so much thoughtful, more, more uh, so much different than her, her, than Harry, than her father. So that moment when he shows up and comes to her, and does something that probably her father wouldn't have been able to do. Like, that landed. That moment lands. Like, if you can write those moments, how do you also not have her run out there to try to save the man she loves? Like, it just... It, it yeah. just... Like, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm being... If it sounds like we're really hard this episode, it's because I expect more from this show than what they've been giving me the last few weeks. Well, you know what it is, honestly? It's, if there's one or two gaps in your storytelling, we can probably avoid it because it's the show. We enjoy the show, we tend to take for what it is. If there's so many gaps in, in, a, in a consistent span, they all start to stand out individually. Yeah. yeah. And what we're doing here, honestly, people call it nitpicking, call what you want. We're fans of the show. We're un, we want this show to be great. We don't grade the show because it's a it gets an A from us. That being said, we want it to be better. I'll, I'll be honest. Um, had they not done the Caitlyn thing, I don't. I don't think I would have been as hard on this, this episode as I as I have been. Like I, when I tell you that that really bothered me and took me out of this. Entire, it pulls you out. It pulled like, me. Wait a, wait a second. It pulled me out of everything and it made me not enjoy pretty much the entire episode. It, it just you know the just entire did. time that we're trying to stop this guy and you just happen to keep a piece of the stone. And tell no one, and never bring it up again for legitimately three months. And not only that, but she didn't bring it up when they were when when Barry was going out there to do certain things. Like there were there were there were moments in this episode she didn't bring it up until like half of the episode. Yeah, they've been going around trying to figure out how Savage are going to happen, and bitch, you got a piece of the philosopher's stone. <laughs> like she's like, I couldn't. I, maybe I, I, maybe oh, yeah. maybe lead with that. That and, and, probably and, be the, uh, the first thing you see. And it still doesn't it do, still doesn't make sense. I like I gotta go back now and watch and see maybe how maybe a piece of the stone broke off. Maybe something happened and we missed it. But I don't remember. I don't know nah, because we do these every week. We would have been like, oh, we saw Caitlin pick up that stone. 
Not not that she picked it up, but like, how could a piece have broken off of it? Yeah. Like, did it were they was something they did before they heat the wood in? Like, when did it break? Like, I don't I don't know, man. It's just, it it just really it just it, that bothered me. It it and it made me really. And again, I don't think the other things are nitpicky. I think they're 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 legit problems. But I don't think they would have bothered me as much if not for this one thing. And it's just, I'm I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm sorry to be. I think I think a lot of people enjoyed this episode. I, I think, and I'm not saying you couldn't. There's a lot of good things here. Um, like I said, uh, I you know HR is always fun. Um, but it's just like I don't know. I feel like it was a real step back for for Caitlyn. I'm also not a fan of the whole Caitlyn Julian relationship thing. That they're trying to force on us solely I'm, because I'm there with it. Uh, she seems to be the black widow of the show and that she likes you and then something horrible happens to you but, and, and that's so. and, and and that's my problem with it i i, I felt like i might i i think yeah, but we knew they couldn't afford him for more than one season no no, no it's not even that there was something I, like I, I i i i knew that i know that he's not gonna last this season i, I knew that that's fine i'm more along the lines of it feels like having to throw Caitlyn in a relationship every season with somebody like it. You're trying to make it a tragic character, which I'm fine with. Like I, I, I it makes sense to me that this will be the, like if this is the reason why Caitlyn turns into killer frost, because now Julian yeah, this is the killer frost push. Yeah. yeah. This is the killer frost push. Okay. But it just feels, it feels lazy to push female care to, to force a female character to go that route because of a relationship. And you got to think about it. Everything, every almost, we're getting to the part where Caitlyn was doing really good this season because her arc didn't involve her being in a relationship with another man, with a, with a man. You've now made it so that that's going to be the push that brings out color frost, frost with her, and you kind of squashed what you had built earlier in the season. You fall, you they've fallen back to lazy tropes, and it's just, yeah, I expect better from the show. You know what it almost feels like to me because Arrow's doing so well this season. It almost feels like the writers that they had been using for the first two seasons, The Flash, went back to Arrow. Yeah, that I mean, honestly, that's what it feels like to me. Um, it feels like they they borrowed writers for the two seasons that they were trying to get the Flash together, and this is the first season that they're trying to. And, and again, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Hey, you know, I know um, that that's probably you know you look at the writing credits are probably all the same. But I feel like that 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 writing team is probably shake, uh, was probably shook up, and some of those writers went back to flat to, to Arrow because that writing has yeah. been strong. They've they've earned their 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 stuff. They've they've tied things together to go to, together really well. Um, I feel like the Prometheus and, and reveal was done great. We care about Vigilante now. At this point, if they don't take the mask off of Savitar and it's not Wally, I, I'm not sure how it lands for me. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think it's fair to have those fears, particularly when and I think it's even more jarring for us to watch as they try to expand the heroic cast on Arrow with Vibe and Frost and uh, the two other new speedsters. Meanwhile, we've already seen them flash, but we've seen the cast expand on Arrow and then teach us to care about Curtis and Renette. Mm-hmm. And while Wally's had a connection because he's Wally West, it's been tougher to see the, to have the show feel that balance that I think Arrow finally found with the larger cast. Here, it just feels off. Yeah. They're really struggling. Like, with Julian coming back in. Oh, we got off a plane. Oh, okay. It's just... I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I, I think that overall... And I, and I know just from looking at the reviews online that I am in... We are in the minority with this episode. All right? I, yeah, I know. I can tell. I, 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 I know that. Catch up for this. Yeah, and, and, and that's fine. But... Uh, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I just think that, I think that, I think there's, I think there's things that need to tighten up and I hope they, I hope they do. I mean, and, and I'm, I'm confident they do. And again, this is not some, oh man, I don't know if we'll come back for season four type deal. No, no, I'm definitely going to be back and I'll definitely, oh, yeah, I'm, in. Like, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, that's not it. It's just, I, I think that the show can do a lot better Um, and we'll see. So can I tip the cap really quickly to some of the writing on HR this week? Um, him saying you only brought so many pairs of underwear was hilarious. I like I like how and he was, was his react his whole reaction to 
two uh, two Savitar speaking through uh, Julian. Um, no, that that is the appropriate reaction. Like, that, no, I, I'm glad. I'm, I'm like, he's like, and then and then when they were like, we got to do it again, and he's like, no, we don't need to do that again. Let's not. I don't. Yeah, perfect. I also liked uh, HR assuming he was the best man. <laughs> <laughs> just right. He's the best. What do you want to say? No, you, uh, that is great. Um, also love the, the the when Savitar told him that uh, you no, know, basically that you're a coward and that you are um, you you'll survive this. You know, just well. That's part of the things I wanted to ask you. Do you think that we've had some predictions come true? Caitlin's obviously the betrayal. Mm-hmm. Well, he's fate worse than death. Which, by the way, if that's if he's not Savitar, you're right. It's a miss. Mm-hmm. I loved the fact. I don't know if I've ever seen it before. If we mentioned on the podcast, the inverted lightning bolt on Savitar's armor. Mm, no. Did you see? Have you seen that? No. I, I only made it out when he had Barry pinned down in the close up fight at the end. Okay, let me just say I think Savitar looked better this these way better these last two episodes too than than he did at the beginning of the season. So good for them on that. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely tighten that up. Um, yeah. Um, so you had that. What else was it? Uh, one will die. So that's obviously Iris. Um, yeah. yeah. Until he changes plans so and becomes and it becomes Barry. Mm-hmm. And I, I love the fact that uh, like him calling out um, uh, Cisco saying, hey, you know, you. You again, Cisco's always there. People are always telling Cisco he's more powerful than he lets on. Basically, called him tech support, which he's not wrong. Yeah. Not wrong on that one. So you you have been reduced to tech support. Um. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Like I said, I I know. Um, I know for a lot of people, this is this is the, this gave a lot of when you get when you're not down in the weeds. Overall, this was a really good episode. For mm-hmm. what you wanted, it, it finally got back to the Savitar plot. Savitar's back out there. Um, it gives you the emotional issues with with Wally. To me, the most of the things with Wally landed way better than you know Iris's shit. But you know, it's what it is. All right, man. You got anything else? Yeah, I got. I need a quick, just a little space to talk for a second. God damn it, Logan! Did you see it? God damn it, Deadpool! No, not yet. I'm going to see this again. Oh, okay. God damn it, Deadpool. <laughs> we don't want already two superhero movies. No, we don't. <laughs> Warner Bros. announcing they're open to making one. Hey, Warners, didn't you release an already cut of that war crime you call a bad universe Superman? Is that true? It was an already version, right? Yeah, it was an already version. Yeah, they did, they did, they did that. They did that. They, yeah, they did that. They did that. I need everyone to realize, everyone who's losing their minds over Logan, it opened on par with Doctor Fucking Strange. There are inherent limits built in when you go for the R rating. Um, Deadpool embrace it with a small budget. Does Warner seem like someone who'd make a small mistake or a very large, very expensive mistake? You know, another thing too is, man, and, and this goes... People have gotten caught up in the R rating as of that fucking. Here's the thing. I saw Logan. You guys know how I feel about Logan. I still think it's a. I think it's a good movie. I think it's a terrible, shitty Wolverine film and X Men film. But the R rating didn't make that film. Yeah, sure. He gets to cut off limbs and put claws of the heads a little bit of here and there. But that's not the reason why it got praised. It's not the reason why uh, people are saying, "Oh, it transcends comic film." That's not the reason why. You could do all the reasons why they like that movie. You could do in a PG-13 film. Did not need to be R-rated. The things that people love about it didn't need to be R-rated. Same thing with Quietly Deadpool. Yeah, Deadpool's rated R mainly for the sexual references in the language. You can take that out and still be a good film. Still be a hilariously good film on a shoestring budget. But no. Now we're going to have DC making a horrible, full speed, very expensive crash. While Marvel, the smart Marvel, not Fox Marvel, will be continue to cap their money because guess what? PG-13 is your wheelhouse. There's a reason why the comic book main books aren't like fucking Logan. 
Going back to wrestling. Hey, there's pro wrestling fans. Where's well, no more blood? I need more bro- I need to see blood on the mat. Hey, it's not for you, you selfish prick. <laughs> and guess what? They made it for you. You still watch, but the kids would, so they make less money. Ergo, it's fiscally irresponsible to make things just for your old, bitter, cynical ass. I don't... The fact that you could have... That you made a Superman movie and said, well, we got an R cut of that movie. You have an R cut of a Superman movie? Stop it. You missed all the points. Go back home. Figure... I, I'm... I, Sorry, I did not mean to do this tonight. I am so mad about this. And watching people who don't like even have any, who only think like blood equal cool, support these ideas is driving me insane. Like, uh, uh, it, it, yeah, no. It, it's almost like they don't remember. That's the Wolverine I always read. What? Show me the books. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not. The Wolverine you always re- again. So here, here's the thing I wanted to point out too. You mentioned it. We and we did our Wolverine character corner, Wolverine, which probably set me off a little bit more because it made me realize that when people say they like a Wolverine, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. No, they don't. Um, we mentioned it, you know, on on like ING, IGN, a bunch of other these uh uh like Empire stuff like that. You know, in the top four or five combo characters list, right? This movie only made $85 million. That's the highest ranking of any of the Wolverine films so far. It only ranked in 85. It didn't even hit $100 million over the weekend. People keep talking about, oh, the record it set in March. Because it was March. Because it's March. Dude, this is where you dump movies. If if Deadpool. March, right after like, the Oscars equals movie dump time. Deadpool made 130 something million. Opening weekend, right? Opening weekend. In February, on Valentine's Day weekend, Romance Son. I'm sorry, it didn't but... have a Johnny Cash fucking artsy fartsy come see us uh, black and white commercial airing every 27 seconds. So you I can... see that thing. I'm gonna punch someone. So you can tell me all you want. Oh, they're gonna do a black and white on the on the on the blue on the blue. I saw. I I. It's so... is, are they doing it in theaters or on the on the Blu-ray? On the Blu-ray. Because you know what's going to happen. They're going to release in theaters in black and white. And I'm going to, my head's going to actually explode. So, I mean, again, enjoy the movie all you want. That's fine. But it can be a good movie without it being don't, a, a sea change in comic book filmmaking. You're overselling it when you talk about all the records it broke and all the stuff like that. It's yet another Wolverine film that didn't break $100 million opening weekend. Which is sad. Again, Wolverine is a character that they had to kill off because he became so oversaturated. Because they put him in everything. You know? It's like Frank's Red Hot. You know, I put that shit on everything. That's what Wolverine was, all right? And you're telling me his best film couldn't break $100 million over the weekend. And you can't tell me it's because of the R rating because Deadpool was R rated. That's what you say you're so damn excited about. Because Deadpool was R rated as well and made more money than that. Way more money than that. Over a Holland, over Valentine's. In February. Yo. And DC's looking at all this going, hold my beer. Let's make an R rated Suicide Squad. Yo, I did the math this month. They're like, just, just, I'm just spitballing work today. You realize that and they dropped the Thor cover today, which I saw that. Good yeah. job, Marvel. Because you, yeah. you I, I, when we get off, I have, a, I have a very shocking theory. I'm gonna talk to you about when I get home before you when we finish recording. Mm-hmm. Um, you realize that Thor comes out like mid beginning of November. They're gonna try to drop Justice League, and then Disney's gonna crush them with Star Wars. That's insane. Mm-hmm. And then you look previously to that Guardians, Wonder Woman. Spider Man. Wonder Woman might make no movie, no money, because guess what? Happy International Women's Day. Why wouldn't you drop the fucking trailer? <laughs> still, still, still it's no. It's a layup. Still no promoting. Hey, you know what we did see, though? I did get to see more images of the armored Batmobile a couple days ago. So there's that. Bigger guns. Bigger, bigger guns than the Batmobile for Justice League. But we're still not promoting Wonder Woman right now. So, and, and on, on International Women's. Day in, in women's like this, history. Like this was a layup. 
This whole this month, is this whole month is a layup. They're doing interviews about Captain Marvel. Th this whole month is a layup for Wonder Woman film. No, it's over. If they release it on Friday, I don't give a shit. I will shit on it. <laughs> before I, thought, I see it, I'll make fun of it for at least three hours before I make myself watch it. They 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 released it. They, I saw the trailer. The 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 last trailer they did. They did. I saw that before. Um, uh, uh, Kong Skull Island. Which, by the way, guys, uh, go see it. I'm working on my reviews now for it. It is, it is, it is every bit of as amazing as you think it would be. Um, I'm watching the, I'm watching the trailer before that movie, right? And I think the Wonder Woman trailer is one of those trailers that it, it becomes less exciting the more and more I watch it. The like more, if you, the, the second time I watched, I was like, that the was low key boring. Yeah, the more and more I watch the trailer, the less excited I am for that film, and the more and more I'm like, huh, this might not be good. So. <laughs> Yeah, I just like every time I watch it, I'm like, I'm just like, eh, you know what? Maybe it's not as good as I thought. Oh, no, like you're, you're. Here's the thing: what happens is that initial excitement wears off because it's a fucking Wonder Woman, right? You're seeing Wonder Woman on the big screen. There's an initial burst of of excitement, right? And guess what? There's the rest of it. Then, then, then you start, then you start watching the rest of the trailer, and then you're like, huh? Why is it so washed out? Yeah, why is huh? This, uh, Oh, this, did, uh. did you read the interview with uh, Patty Jenkins today? No. It may be yesterday. She says that it's she's she's doing a very good job of selling the movie, saying she wants to make a wanted to be a classic movie with lots of humor and heart and action. And they said it was like oh I forget the two. She said it was Indiana Jones meets oh I, I, I forget the, the other movie she cited, but she said two classic movies. But then she said that Chris Pine, Steve Trevor is the war hero uniting them. And I'm like oh no. <laughs> Oh, 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 you poor thing. Please hope I hope you were misquoted. Because if Chris Pine is the emotional linchpin of this movie, starring fucking Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Oh, you heard the Amazonian Nail Origins? Yeah, I've read that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, man. I've read that. If that ain't horseshit. Like, they were created. And apparently it takes up like half of Act One. They were they were they were created by the gods. I I uh, okay. I, yeah. it, it's it, it, no, it's okay being created by the gods. No, it, Aphrodite or Artemis or Hera. I, I that's know, it. Yeah, yeah. It, Zeus. It, yeah, that's what it has to get into. It, they were created by Zeus. Infamous yeah. rapist of human and god alike. Uh, uh, uh. Zeus <laughs> made the Amazons. Uh. What? Not Artemis, goddess of the hunt? Not not even pre-crisis Aphrodite, goddess of love? Because that's the... And I invite everyone who thinks I'm just talking on my ass to listen to our Wonder Woman character corner because the beauty of the Amazons in DC has been the, 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 the compassion through strength. Diana fights as a last resort. But for you to make them literally tools of war created by Zeus, have at it, Sally. Good luck. Mm -mm. They, and I go back to my point from a couple weeks ago, based on the timing of the movie, lack of promotion, and everything I've heard, less than a billion. <clears throat> yeah. Well, no, I'm still going with it because... It... We need to make that bad at some point. Yeah. Because... Chris, the, just the way the schedule's put together and the way Warner Brothers is treating this movie, no way. <laughs> did, did BBS get over a billion? Did it ever break it? No, it didn't. Okay. No, there is there is no way. You know what? I, you know, you know what? You know so what? Much in 2017? You know what? I would probably take the bet on it making over a billion if they had actually released a fucking trailer today and actually tried, but... It's a layup, and they didn't even take the layup, man. It's the easy layup. The, the easy. uncontested open court, just drop it in there, get the easy two, get back on D. You couldn't even do that right, could you, DC? It's technical free throw, Joe. Just, just, it's nobody there. Just take the, oh, God damn it. Oh, all right, all right. All right. Anything else we want to? Uh, anything else? No, we that was it. I just had to get it off my chest. Yeah, stop ranting. Like, I yeah. started thinking about because it's International Women's Day, and it'd be a really, 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 really good message to send to to have the former UN ambassador. Like, I, this the whole thing. It's disgusting. It's lazy. 
It's just lazy, Chris, and you know it, and I know it. Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So, All right, folks, there you guys have it. Uh, again, leave us a five-star review on Super Tuesday recap on iTunes. You can also email us at mtrailerreviews at movietrailerreviews.net, and we'll read those on air. Um, again, remember, is blame Chris and blame D Palm for your uh, your hatred of us for, for not taking our side on the Barry Allen thing. But um, she's wrong. And I'm she's, grateful. Yeah, she's she's dead wrong on this one. I'm sorry, guys. Ungrateful as hell. Yeah, no, that's that's very ungrateful. He is trying to save your life. Damn it! Come on, get your get your shit together, Iris. Come on. Uh yeah, guys. Um. Anyway, uh, <laughs> thank you guys very much for listening. And until next time, we're out of here. Peace.